For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Well, hello again. This is uh, an opportunity we have uh, very infrequently is to have a very special guest by the name of Lisa McLean, the uh, Congresswoman from the 10th District. We are welcoming you to the set. Nice to have you. Nice to be here. You've got a very, very busy job. Yes, I do. You, uh, you have been in term now for one year, one term, and you're about ready to get reelected for a second term. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to get you in here and find out uh, what's going on in Washington, right. what's going on in the district, and welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Let's, let's start out. You and a bunch of other bipartisan people in the state of Michigan, Republicans and Democrats, passed a resolution, or a, a, it wasn't a bill, I don't think. It was a bill. Yeah. It was a bill mm -hmm. to rename our post office. Talk mm -hmm. to us about that. Yeah, so um, Marine Corporal um, uh, Jeffrey Steadfast yep. um, obviously passed away giving the ultimate sacrifice for our, for our country. Um, and I thought it would be uh, a very nice honor if we could rename the St. Clair Post Office in his honor. It's a wonderful idea. He so, graduated from uh, St. Clair High in 2005. Yeah and uh, went into uh, into the service and uh, served in Afghanistan and uh, passed away and what a nice tribute to him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was actually the second bill that I've passed since, uh, well this bill, excuse me, it's gotten, it's passed through Congress. I'm sure it'll pass the Senate and I'm, I'm very confident the President will sign it, obviously. Um, so that's the second bill that we've gotten passed. Well, and one of the nice things of it, and you and I talked about it before we started this interview, was it was a bipartisan bill. Yeah. And one of the the, the unique things that, that doesn't happen very often mm -hmm. in Washington. Yeah, in order to get uh, a post office renamed, you have to have every member of the delegate of the Michigan delegation to sign on. Wow. Yeah, and they all signed on willingly and happily and, and uh, Hopefully it'll pass the Senate probably within the next month or so. And we can have a big celebration when it uh, uh, opens uh, in, in, the, in the spring, when the weather is nice. That's right, let's get it. We'll, we'll cover that for you. Uh, that's one thing that, that's uh, on the plate and, and it is exciting and good, but there's so much going on in your job. When, when you ran for office at the, in the, two years ago, three years ago, did you think that the job would be as fulfilling and <laughs> as, as busy as it is? I love it. So let me start with I enjoy it. Um, I hope I have the honor of serving for a long, long time. Um, it's definitely a marathon, not yep, a sprint. Yep, yep. Um, you got to pack your patience, no, yep. no question. Um, but Everybody wants something. Everybody, yes. And everybody, what is good though is you see a lot of people that are very passionate yes. about a lot of causes. Mm -hmm. And if we can just channel that passion into moving this country forward, yep. our district, our state forward, we can all do a lot of really good things. Um, we, we have to get, get back to dealing with the issues that are facing us and stop with the bullying. Yeah, um, yeah. It, well, we'd all that. do better. I'm glad to hear that. There was a fellow by the name of uh, Jerry Ford who was from uh, Grand, Rapids. Grand Rapids and was one of our presidents. And he said a long time ago, and I don't know why it stuck with me, that politics is the art of compromise. <laughs> and uh, we haven't seen a lot of that in the last numbers of years, but hopefully you guys can get back to that. Yeah, well, you know, um, I've been in business right. pretty much my whole life. And what I tell everyone is um, politics, there are a lot of similarities between policy and politics and business. There's a lot of differences, but there are a lot of similarities. And I tell everybody, have you ever been in business and done a business deal where you get 100% and I get nothing? Right. That's called no deal. Correct. Now, we have to be cautious on, you know, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and right. that stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, we really have to stop this perfection yes. and strive for progress. And I think that's why you see D.C. right now, it's, as, at, it's such a grind and it's a grinding halt. It's got to be hard on you. Um, it, it's, been, uh, it's been a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, okay. but I enjoy it. I okay, do. I really do. Let's get to some fun things. Sure. Um, a lot of things that uh, you look out of uh, this, out on the St. Clair River today. In the last week or two, you see plenty of plenty of ice. Yes, that ice comes down from the lakes. And one of the things that the Pune community around here would like to see is more ice breakers. I know yes. the, that they they've been passed. The the orders have been passed. Yeah. But we don't have any money. How, talk to me about that. So, um, in the NDAA, uh, one of the amendments that I got passed was the ability to get another ice cutter for for this region, which is absolutely huge and needed. Um, and needed. The problem comes in as as the as the bill has been passed and the money is there, but the money now has to be appropriated okay. is the right word it has to be appropriated which means it has to get funded right. right well if we don't pass a budget which we haven't passed we're still operating under the Trump budget mm -hmm. and what we do mm. is every every so many months uh, the budget was supposed to be passed and appropriated in September but we continue to do what's called a continuing resolution which means we, no, we don't even fight over it. We just <laughs> kick the can down the road. Yeah, yeah. So now we've kicked the can down the road till March. I always vote no on the continuing resolution and everyone says, oh, well, you're okay with shutting the government down? No. No. What I am is this was supposed to be done in September. If we continue to do these continuing resolutions, we will never get the funds appropriated mm -hmm. for the things like the ice cutter that we have passed. So the other option is let's come together and work on a budget to get these dollars appropriated. Do you think that'll happen? Are you encouraged? I'm, ho I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay, well, let's, that's good. Let's say that. That's and, I, good. and I just say that because this is the third CR that we've had. Yeah. And, and we have to, I mean, we have all these projects that need to be funded, and the money is there. And we have businesses that, that have prepared to start these projects that can't start the projects until they get the money. So. And, and then your reference back to uh, business. Yeah. Business can go through those same kind of things. They want to get something, but then they go ahead and they buy it, right. and they and they make it happen. As opposed to what's happening in Washington now, you yeah. talk about it and you think about it and you say, okay, we'll do that, but then you don't come up with the other part. So right. that's got to be solved, right? Yeah, it does. Um, stick sticking with the water. Uh, have you got any news, new news for us about Blue Water Bridge? Anything happening there? Um, I, I can share with you the Blue Water Bridge has been getting a lot of attention and I went up there and I met with the folks at the Blue Water Bridge. Um, we have to figure out how to move this pros, uh, project forward. It, it's it's important. I mean, if you take a look at the land is all cleared, yeah. right? And Getting it's been that. cleared, which means we're not collecting any tax revenue off that land Correct. either. Correct. You know, so it's, it's kind of a multi-dimensional issue we have. Um, the last that we checked, we are still waiting on MDOT to, to finish and complete the environmental survey to move that project forward. But for the most part, no project is perfect, right? But I believe you'll see that move forward in the future because it's getting a lot of attention and we're working together to really try to get that. We either have to move the project forward or do something with the adjacent land. Correct. I mean, we, we got to make a decision here. We can't right. keep talking about it and talking about it. We, we actually got to get everybody in the room. Right. <laughs> Sit them down. And I, I will share with you that I've had conversations with our governor on what are we doing to move this project forward. So let's either move it forward or scrap it. Right. You know, I don't want to scrap it, but um, by the same token, limbo is the worst. The middle of the road, right, is the, always the worst place to be. Right, right. <laughs> so. uh, Marine City had a, a wonderful ferry for years and years and years. It was stopped uh, because of some ice, with back to our ice problem. Uh, and it's now gone away. Is there any hope for that, or have you hear any discussion about that in so, Washington? Um, unfortunately, no. Okay. Um, and what you'll find with me is you may not always like the answers I give you, but I'm going to tell you, well, you got what it. I know. That's wonderful. Um, and I always apologize because I don't have a big filter from my brain to my mouth. <laughs> but um, there's not a lot of movement at all on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, tell the people what, sir, what committees you serve on. 
So currently I serve on two committees, which is Education and Labor, which okay. uh, is a very critical committee, especially right now mm -hmm. with everything that's going on with schools and education and what's being taught and how do we how do we educate our children and how do we recover from the pandemic with a lot of the children haven't been in normal school, so to speak, for maybe the past two years. Um, the other committee that I serve on is the Armed Services Committee, oh. uh, which is, um, if anybody, and I'm sure everybody has been watching what's going on with Russia and the yeah. Ukraine and 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 whatnot. Um, it's a it, it's a very active committee, at, to say the least. The other committee, uh, it's not a committee; it's a task force that I sit on, and we can sit around and. Uh, you know, one side can complain about the other. That goes on a lot. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, we have to come up with some solutions. Mm -hmm. So one of the task force, there's 18 members of Congress that have been chosen to sit on this task force. Of, it's called Jobs in the Economy. Okay. What do we do to jumpstart this economy and correct some of the issues that we have now so we can move forward? whether it's supply chain issues, whether it's uh, inflation, whether it's, you know, how, what do we do with all of the mandates? What do we do with regulation, legislation? We have to begin to get our economy back on track. Mm -hmm. Because in my opinion, if you have a strong, solid economic system, you have better education. Oh, yeah. You have less they all crime, go together. You have more charity. Um, you have more tax revenue to do more social programs. Mm -hmm. And it's critical that we start talking about what legislation do we need to do or possibly undo. A lot of times it's not new. We just need get to undo it. some, open it up, less mm -hmm. restrictions mm -hmm. to get to get the economy mm -hmm. to move, move forward. Will that committee come up with, uh, task force come up with recommendations soon, or is it a long-term kind of thing? Um, I see that happening next Congress. So I so see that happening in uh, 2023. 2023. Okay, yeah. okay. But at least there's 18 people together yep. talking and thinking yep. uh, and, and exploring. Um, any new initiatives for the 10th district? Before I get into that, uh, 10th district is going to be changing a little, isn't it? Have yeah. you seen any final maps? Yes. So the new, the 10th district will now become the 9th district because, <laughs> and I know it's kind of confusing. Um, we, as Michigan lost population, we lost a seat. So we're going from 14 congressional representatives to 13. So my district, um, which will be the new 9th district, we picked up about 175,000 additional wow. um, constituents. Yeah. So my district will go from the tip of the thumb from Bad Axe. Yep. Um, and I'll have pretty much my entire thumb district. I'll pick up more of Tuscola County. Okay. But then I will go more and I will get more of Oakland County. Really? Northern Oakland County. Wow. All the way down to Milford. To Milford? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a pretty wow. big district. It's pretty You're going to be on the road, ma'am. Yeah, hopefully hopefully the weather will get nice. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Milford, so the northern Oakland County area is, that is probably not, is it rural, that, that um, part? There's a, it's a mix. You know, you have Oakland, Oakland you have Oxford, you have okay, Lake well, Orion. Yeah. Um, it goes into get Clarkston. To the White Horse Inn. Get to the White Yeah. <laughs> it goes to um, Clarkston, Heartland. And the northern half of Milford, yeah. Okay, so. that's interesting. Yeah, that, you'll be you'll be a bu busy a busier person. So now we know where your new district's going to be, uh, and in that district, are there priorities on issues that you're thinking about or talking about that we should know about? Um, one, uh, there's a few. Okay. If you take a look at what, in my opinion, that I've listened to the constituents in the district is, it goes back to that job and economy. Okay. We have to figure out what we're doing with this labor shortage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a labor shortage in, in our district, uh, especially, and it's not just the low end or lower paying jobs. I'm talking to manufacturing companies, I'm talking to nurses, you know, mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. facilities. These are real good paying jobs and we can't find people to fill them. Right. Um, we have supply chain issues. 
Uh, yeah. We have to figure out how to get parts and equipment here. Not to mention, um, the, the other thing is, what are we doing about our children and the education? That is top of mind. Um, and I would say the third issue is, what are you doing to make to, to deal with this immigration issue because it is starting to affect our community whether it be with fentanyl and drug drugs being you know being increased or it be illegal immigration coming into our communities i mean we just saw recently that a man on the terrorist watch, watch list the department of homeland security knew um, he was on the watch list, and he's in Dearborn now. So we, we there's a lot of concern a, around hmm. that. That um, story I had not heard. I yeah. Not heard. Um, constituents probably never call your office. <laughs> Maybe they do. They do. The, the, the loved ones. The loved ones do. <laughs> but what kinds of services does the the uh, office and I think your office is in Romeo now it's actually at uh, 26 and mound oh, okay. um, and then we try and have some mobile office hours yeah. but what is what I, what I want everyone to know is we're here to serve you and we've returned last year over $350,000 to constituents, whether it be um, for IRS is issues, you know, they're struggling with the IRS, whether it's unemployment issues, whether it's VA issues, those are all dollars that we've returned back to the community um, from constituents who have had problems. So remember, the job of a politician is supposed to be to serve their constituents, yeah, right. right? Correct. Things we can help people on are passports and, and, and issues. If you're struggling getting a passport or, or having any issues with that, sometimes we can push that along a, a, a little bit faster on your own or, oh my gosh, I'm going on vacation and yeah. um, my passport, what do I do? We can help with that. We can help with VA issues. We can help with IRS issues. We can help with PPP loans. All of those sorts of issues, we can help and we want to help. That's what we're here for. Um, I have a wonderful staff and Kathy Verton, obviously, is mm -hmm. my district director and Alex Aprile um, is one of, the, I think, one of the best caseworkers that we have. But I would encourage you, if you need to, reach out and call, email, text, whatever you need to do. Um, I know you have a newsletter that goes out and people can subscribe to that. But it, and you do go to meetings and you do go to town halls and yeah. things along those lines, which yeah. is good. Uh, uh, how can people help you? The biggest thing that people can do to help me is if there's an issue, if there's a concern, call me. Let's talk about it. Call the office. You know, my district will will represent almost 900,000 people. It's Amazing. really difficult. Um, as much as I try, but I can't be everywhere. Um, all, all the time so if you have an issue or you have some feedback or, or even better you have an idea mm -hmm. please reach out to myself or, or, or the office and share those ideas the only thing I ask is you know please do them respectfully mm -hmm. um, you get a lot farther with me if you don't call me names <laughs> or my staff <laughs> please don't call my staff names they're actually trying to help um, but, but yeah we are here to serve the community uh, I guess that goes to, to uh, uh, one of the things that the ratings uh, say that the Congress is in the not very good numbers as a whole body. Yeah. Uh, how do we ever get that back together? I think if you look at government in general, <clears throat> um, people want some truth. Yeah. Just give me the facts. Forget well, where do about we the get it? <laughs> Well, I think a lot of it, sir, starts with the media. With yeah. all due respect, the media, you know, used to present the facts, and then they'd have an editorial section. Mm -hmm. But we just delivered yeah, the facts. Right. Media just delivered the facts, and then we we trusted the American people to take those facts and make good decisions for themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. Now what we do, everything has a spin. And, 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 and we all do it, so right. let's, let's be honest. We, yeah. If we could just give the American people and have a little bit of faith, for example, COVID, the vaccine is a great one. Here are the facts, and let's tell the honest truth and the honest facts, 
and you decide what's best right. with your health care professional. Right. I don't think it's my job or the government's job to mandate yeah, you didn't get a medical degree. Anything. I, I didn't. And right. I don't, I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV, right. right? Right. So I think they need a little truth. I think they need some transparency. Mm -hmm. And most of all, I think they need some consistency. And we as politicians would be a lot better off. And the American people would trust us a lot more. Listen, I don't think the American people expect perfection. No. Right? I'm not perfect. Don't tell no. my husband that. Okay. <laughs> right? But but I think if we all can work together to make positive progress, I think we're all going to be better off. Oh, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. But I salute you for your efforts and uh, the huge job that you have. And uh, yeah, you know, it's got to be early in the morning to late at night, seven days a week. So it's fun, though. It's good. But you, but you, have you to seem love to be what up. You do. That was well, absolutely. You know? I totally agree with that. And I totally uh, agree with that. it's good. It's uh, I wouldn't trade it. No regrets. Okay. Absolutely no regrets. I look at, I look forward to serving everyone next term. So. Good. Yeah. I know you have another meeting this afternoon, so I will uh, let you go and uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you. But uh, please encourage you to stop back when you're in the district and in the, in the area. We'd love to have you spend some more time with us. And if you need to get in, in touch with me, or the web, the website is www.mclean.house.org. Okay, we'll throw that up. throw that up on the screen right. too. So very All good. Right. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so, so much, much for coming. In. Have Talk. a great day. Yes, right. ma'am. That's about it for this edition of the uh, Focus Program. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in. Till next time, I'm Paul Dingaman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.